I think it's often lost on us white people when we go on about how beautiful our place is, how lucky we are, that Australia is young and free. I mean, what an assault on common sense to say that Australia is young and free. We're ancient and the ancient part of that community is anything but free. My name is Ben Quilty and I made a work called Iri Naringi for this exhibition. On one visit out to Armata, I asked Sally Scales and Mr. Frank Young and a few of the people who were there if they could take me somewhere that there'd been frontier violence. I wanted my work for this exhibition to be about that frontier violence. And it made sense that Vincent had invited me and therefore I wanted to tell a story about the country that his family and extended community lives on. And actually Sally and her mum Josephine took me to this site um, drove through the desert for hours in the most extraordinary, beautiful landscape, but hostile to a whitey like me. These ladies just knew where they were going, knew every stone, knew the place. And it was a huge honour and privilege to be taken to this site where uh, a white man was killed by young Aboriginal men for, for his violence, for his, his racism, for his, his actively destroying their water sources, which a whole community had survived on for th tens of thousands of years. And they killed him and the white people came back and, and killed a lot of elderly uh, Anganu men in this place, Irinirinji. In my studio, we photo montaged a, a make-believe landscape it's a, a totally made up landscape from different po parts of, a f of photographs taken around the site because there wasn't one site. There's no, there's no plaque to remember the deaths of these elderly men. I, it's just by sitting in that place and that environment and feeling the weight of the history, the beauty of the landscape and the cultural significance of a site like that, that I then collaged these photographs and made the painting as a raw shark. I guess it's a, a play on activating the audience to see their place in that part of our, our shared history. It is an Indigenous story, but without my white forebears, it's a non-existent story. So my, I do tell a story that I am partly involved with. I didn't quite mean for it to be so massive, but when Vincent asked me, I thought I've really got to step up here. And I just think that it's a healthy thing to do, that by recognising that history, on a day like Remembrance Day, that you, we build a thick, heavy, solid layer of our history that is only good for our future. It's nothing negative about really acknowledging our history. I hope that you only need the tiniest piece of empathy to understand the sorrow and intergenerational trauma that ripples constantly through Indigenous communities from one side of this country to the other. Uh, and to be a part of it and to have an active voice and to be able to feel that I can do something and those people respect my efforts is, um, I, there's nothing else I need to do.